I mean, look at this, man. Look at this. This is why I come here. It's amazing. Just that feeling of having everything you need inside this kayak for seven days and just disappearing. There's not many places in the UK where you can do that. This is one of them. So, so, let's wait for the cars to go. So yeah, made it here, made it to uh, Loch Lomond, as you can see, beautiful Scottish weather. Um, couldn't have asked for any different weather, to be honest. And uh, yeah, the weather, the, it's been raining quite a lot. And um, I mean, the river's not too bad at the moment. I could probably launch on that now and go downstream and go into the loch. But as you can see from the old, the last three times I've been here, there's a brand new bridge here now. Literally the old bridge, it had a lot old sort of like wooden rickety bridge there and it's literally just been washed away. Um, the water level apparently went right up to the clubhouse, which you can see in the distance over there. Um, and you can actually see on the grass in the fields, the direction of the flow of the water. It's mental. So there's literally this, this whole river pretty much flooded its banks. And uh, you can imagine this whole field here was just basically water just flowing all the way along it's taken out all the fence posts pretty much everywhere where the cars are parked apparently there was cars floating in the uh, in the car park you can imagine your car floating downstream and ending up in the lock but yeah i know mental absolutely mental i don't know how that got yet must have died in the flooding got caught in a pipe or something yeah, first fish of the trip. Look at that golden eye. <laughs> but, pike and perch is mainly what I'm after this trip. I'm gonna catch some big crocodile pike and uh, some big lump perch. So, I think I'll catch more sort of on the other side of the lock, but um, take a couple days of paddling to get there. Uh, but that's the whole fun of it. It's the whole paddling and fishing side of it in the wild camping. It's the whole experience really. And that's why I come here. Yeah, I'm going to sort my gear out now and um, I'll see you in the morning. Hold on, I'm like, I'm wet. This thing weighs a ton. Weighs an absolute ton. are in. Right, let's get the paddle. I'm looking forward to this trip. I've been planning it since the beginning of lockdown and uh, finally here. 
finally here on this beautiful river. Amazing place. All right, let's get out of there. That's so much better than that. So it gets really shallow where I am now. It sort of goes onto sort of a bank. Just want to make sure I don't scrape on the bottom and turn sideways. Yeah, so this kayak probably weighs close to 100 kilograms now, I reckon. And then you've got me as well, 100 kilograms, which is well over this kayak's limit. However, I'm still floating, I'm still paddling. It's, uh, it's amazing what you can fit in these kayaks. Look at that. River starting to get a lot wider as it moves towards the lock. I'm not that far away from the uh, from the uh, end of the river. So you just round that next bend, it sort of opens up, and then there's a holiday park on the right, and then it opens up into this big expanse of water with mountains either side, which is just amazing. So scenic. So peaceful as well. Alright, so I'm almost at the end of the river. I'll show you now. I've come from the campsite up there in that distance. And then just through that little gap there is where it enters into Loch Loman. I believe this is the river. Fallock. A little bit of wind against me and obviously because my kayak's the heaviest it's going to be this whole week because I've got everything in it and I haven't used anything yet. It's uh, like, like paddling a tanker. I mean all of this was dry land last time I was here. We were all standing on dry land. We literally had to pull the kayaks up here, pull them along the land and then into the lock. But as you can see it is rammers. It's actually a kayaker in there. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. And if he's lure fishing.
Oh, that's a first. First time I've ever paddled straight in without having to uh, pull the kite through. Well, that is definitely a first, paddling in and out of that little lock. It's the first time I've ever done that. Normally all of this around me is dry ground. And there's normally a lip here as well, which shows you how high the water is. It's nice, that. I did actually have a take then, but I lost him. is Island Ivao. So I'm going to spend in the night. I'll paddle a bit closer so you can get a better look. So change of plan. I was going to spend the first night on uh, Island Ivao. However, that is in the distance. It's all the way down there. It's all the way down there. Basically, I got to the island. And it is one of my favourite islands because you do feel alone. However, not today. Uh, some people have beat me to it. There's a group of what I describe as teenagers on there, all blaring music out and boom boxes and that, which kind of defeats the point of why I'm out here. Um, so yeah, definitely not spending the night on there. Not with them drinking and playing music. Kind of ruins it for me. So taking the hard decision, I'm going to paddle all the way on the first day right across to my second island, which is going to be a bit of a lick out. But I've got no wind, it's uh, overcast, so it's not too hot. I'm taking going to take regular breaks, I'll probably get there just before it gets dark, but yeah. 15, well about 25 k's, maybe more, in one day. So it's going to be an emotional paddle, but I'm taking it slow, I'm not rushing. Just enjoying, and I'm staying away from the middle, middle of the lock, I'm sort of hugging the, uh, the bank, trying to get out of the wind as much as I can. And uh, yeah, I normally, we normally paddle on the right hand side of the lock, so this time I'm going up the left um, just to see if there's anything else I can see that I haven't seen before. And uh, yeah, so day one, I'm um, sucked the fishing now. Day one's going to be literally just paddle all the way up. And then, uh, yeah, I'll try and film along the way, but my main aim is to try and get there before it gets dark so I can set up camp. And then, uh, yeah, later on tonight we'll do, we'll do a video diary of exactly what's happened today in case I don't get it on film, but I better start paddling. A lovely little spot. <laughs> Make sure my kayak doesn't float away. <laughs> the 
Look at this though. Lovely little beach. This could definitely be home for the night. We've got a perfect area for a tent. I'm not going to lose my kayak in a minute. Stop here and have a little bit of a, have some food because I'm hanging out. My cheeky poo is on. Lovely little spot. Sounds like there's a nice waterfall down there as well. Cracking little beach. Rubbish everywhere though. Disposable barbecues, plastic, tubs. Glass bottle down there. I don't understand why people can't take their rubbish home with them. You brought it here, why don't you take it back? Found these fake worms on the beach. Another man's trash, another man's treasure. See how this goes. That beach was horrendous. I mean, lovely location, great place to put up a tent, beautiful scenery. However, you always got to do your little checks before you start getting getting too excited because that place is riddled, absolutely riddled with bugs. It's got midges galore there. Um, I reckon because there's all the moss along there. They're all living in that moss and grass, so. I will not be staying there tonight, I can tell you that right now. I'm going to push on, I'm going to go to my second island, still on day one. I'm, it's probably going to be dark by the time I get there, but I'd rather do all the paddling in one day. Get out of the way. Enjoy, just enjoy a scenic day. And then, and then I can focus on fishing for the next couple of days and just purely fishing which is something I've never done yet I've always every day we've done another leg another leg another leg so yeah and I'm glad I'm still glad I launched the being glass because it's nice to paddle the whole lock and see everything even if the first and last day I mean the last day will be easier to come back because the wind always goes the direction I'm going you know I'm always fighting the wind on the way out <laughs> on the way back it's always good and I've got ponchos and ground mats and things so I've got some stuff that I can like improvise with and make a sail. Uh, I've got a pole at the back I can stick in the front. So on the way back it should be a lot quicker. It's just day one and my arms will be tired by then so hopefully there's wind. I bet there's no wind when I leave. But yeah, I'm not going to be staying on that beach. Beautiful beach but so many bugs. So many bugs. Yeah, salt. Salty cracks or crackers and some smoked oysters. That's my lunch. Or late afternoon snack, should I say. Not for the faint hearted. Great snack on the go, dried mango. Well, 
got a few packs of these because this stuff is so Moorish. It just goes down easily. Yeah, great energy. I know it sounds weird, but sometimes I forget to eat on these trips. I mean, when you're paddling 25 kilometers up a lot against the wind and the heat, um, Sometimes forget to eat. You just get caught up in the moment. When your kayak weighs 100 kilograms, you're putting a lot of energy into paddle that across that distance. Yeah. Those are two quick snack ideas for you. Pretty sure a lot of you are not going to like the mussel idea. I mean, sorry, the oysters. But if you like that sort of thing, it's nice. There's no midges here either. When you're on the water, as long as you're not too close to shore, it's fine. When I sat on that beach then, I was getting eaten alive. And it's resealable, which is great. Right. Let's go for the next leg. Left at uh, half seven this morning. It's now eight o'clock at night. <laughs> so it's been 12 and a half hours. I probably paddled, oh God, near enough 20 miles, I reckon, against the wind pretty much most of the way. And I'm just hiding around a corner, having a break before I do the last leg. Uh, probably got another half a mile to go, I reckon, till I hit um, my island for the night. Yeah, it's been a hard slog. I'm knackered. I'm starving. I can't wait. I'm gonna have big eats. It's probably gonna start getting pretty much dark when I get there. Um, so I've got my new hammock or a tent. Both of them are new. Both I haven't put up yet. So uh, I think I'm gonna go for the hammock tonight because I think that'll be easier to put up in the dark. Um, but yeah, I think the aim of the game is to try and get there with as much light as I can. Try and collect firewood because I'd like to have a fire tonight. Um, then stick up the hammock and then cook dinner but yeah it's been an epic epic paddle today i've literally come from all the way down there through that valley all the way around it's been mental absolutely mental it's the furthest i've ever paddled in a day ever it's good practice though and it's good fizz as well so yeah last leg now though let's just get there and then uh set up camp and then hopefully we have the next three or four days of fishing try and catch as much uh, as much as i can and then on the last day hopefully the winds like this going that direction normally is and uh, i'll make a makeshift sail and it should halve the journey time to be honest but yeah let's get paddling for the last leg to do now Well, 
I made it here. Very different from last time. Crazy, it's all underwater. Literally all underwater. Claim this space. So we paddled from Bianglas, uh, which is the north end of Loch Lomond, well, on the River Falloch into Loch Lomond. And then I did about between 15, I reckon, and 20 miles of paddling all in one day. I just took it slow, plenty of stops along the way. And finally, I made it to uh, my second choice. My first choice was Island Ivar, which is only you know a couple, couple uh, hours paddle from uh, Bianglas campsite. but. It was uh, occupied and they were playing loud music in there and that's not the kind of, not the reason why I come out here. I mean, so I found an island. It's uh, not many people on here that I know of. I, don't, I haven't seen any. But this is the campsite. Got me a heavy 100 kilogram kayak packed with everything you can think of. But uh, it was, it's definitely worth it. I've got everything I want. Uh, I've got my... Uh, so I got my tarp set up. I'm going for the um, going for the hammock today. I just secured it on. A nice cushy hammock set up there. I don't know if you can see in this low light, but I've even got a black mattress. So uh, should be cushy tonight. I don't think it's going to rain, but I will put the tarp up anyway because it'll uh, hold the heat in as well. But yeah, I'll show you from the other angle. First time sleeping in a hammock, so. Uh, Hopefully it works. Hopefully it holds me because it's not the, not the most expensive hammock I've ever seen. But yeah, that is my setup. A nice little inflatable mattress. Obviously that's going to sink quite low down when I get in. So I'll put it quite high. Should be enough room. Yeah. And then I'm going to get some dinner on in a minute. Made a little fire pit over there. So uh, the reason why I'm lighting a fire is to get rid of the midges. Also, it's bush TV, isn't it? It's why we come into the wild. Yeah, I've got a bit of firewood. I've got a dead tree, uh, which I'm going to chop up with a saw. Uses firewood. I've... Tinder's not the best. It's all sort of wet and soggy because of the rain and moisture. But I've got some. Um, I'm not going. I'm not I'm not doing it the hard way. I've got some fire gels here, which I'm going to stick in the middle to get it started if that doesn't work i'll just get a gas burner in there until it lights and then all the sodden wood i'm sort of put around the side to try and uh, dry out but yeah just a bit of wood just to uh, keep it going throughout the evening um because uh one of the best ways of getting rid of midges is sitting by a fire they don't come anywhere near you because of the smoke but yeah this is literally one of my favorite beaches in loch lomond i mean look at that view man Unfortunately, it's, uh, it's overcast and I got here quite late, but when you watch the sun go down, the view is just amazing. I did a little, uh, did a little time lapse earlier, and I put it quite low on the ground, so I'll play that for you in a minute. But that was, um, it was pretty cool, but this view is just mental. 